Hello. Good morning. It's great to be here. Thank you for invitation. Thank you, uh, you know, these guys, Alex, Andras, Semi, Rafael, and many others from Circle. They are going, doing a uh, hell good job. Yeah, and we know, know it. So today's, today's speech is about digital tag of war unraveling the cyber battle between U U Ukraine and Russia. Yeah, it's about CTI and how to manage it in the context of this use case. And uh, we will try to explain it. So uh, we will enjoy it. And we hope that you will enjoy it too. So how we will do it, uh, our talk plan. We will start with the introduction about ourselves. It's about 10 minutes. Yeah, and that's why we would like to lock the door because usually people leave in five minutes. Yeah, so uh, then we will clo <laughs> close the real value of threat intelligence. Um, real value of threat intelligence in the use case in geopolitical saga. Our way in maturity of using CTI yeah, from zero to still we have something only in CTI. Um, royal discipline of cybersecurity and how to manage it, active cyber defense for non-state defenders. And how to manage things from CTI and something you can tell to your mama in the evening at home, yeah, some takeaways. Uh, before we start, we have uh, a few disclaimers. This presentation was not created by any vendor, but partially by AI, because my colleague is 70% of Android. So, what's about us? I'm Andre Nekovas, just call me Andy. I'm CISO and Chief Deception Officer uh, at our company. Uh, I love getting things down, creating vision, missions, you know, strategies. Um, I'm aimed, uh, white aimed. My dear colleague is Jan Paul. For French speakers, uh, you can call him Jean Paul. And he's threat hunter and technical guy in my right hand in the battlefield of cyber, uh, cyber security. Yeah. Uh, he's deep aimed, but you can see his white too. You can follow us or reach us via LinkedIn uh, or, you know, now it's X or X. We are quite experienced speakers, I guess. We have uh, six years of experience, uh, which is based on our research. We want to present every year, every month, every day, almost our uh, results of our research, uh, research, which is aimed on active cyber defense, deception use, detection engineering now. Uh, we were at Black Hat, Qubit, and Hecklu. We are here for the second time. And one question, do you remember our speech in 2019? Anybody? Alex. Yeah. Thank you, Andras. And for others, there's a big difference in these four years. Our team got about 30 kilos up in weight since the 2019. Yes, it won't stop us. We have a Deception Digest, it's newsletter from this area. area. Uh, it's free, and we created DEFCON Group for Czech Republic. We work for state company but we are not army or our secret services. We are cloud provider and uh, for, the, for the state and we are critical information infrastructure. We want to provide state part of e-government cloud in the Czech Republic. Uh, and we are providing cyber ser ser security services for, for public administration. But, and our environment quite interesting because we have on-prem, we have, for example, QRadar for on-prem. We have Sentinel for Azure and Azure Stack. And we have Google Cloud and Amazon. And in this, this environment, we are offering the services for public administration. Our strategy is use internal resources. First, we have on an R&D. We're trying to be not depend on any vendor. 
Yeah, but IBM wa still wants to buy everything from them, but we don't want to. So our atti attitude is active or proactive. We use <laughs> CTI, OSIN, deception, detection, engineering, you know, and AI. Uh, last, last year it was only ML, machine learning, but now we, we, we use this, this name. We are part of FIRST, Trusted Interviews, uh, MACE community. I appreciate it very well for a, lo a lot of years. And we are part of Shadow, uh, Shadow Service. Our project in R&D are uh, Project B. It's about tracing employees, you know. Project E is EDR for the Wall State. Project M is Messenger for communication uh, of the Wall State. Project S is about open deception solution appliance. And Project Z is about protection management at their home. And if you look at these code names of projects from the top to down, it makes BEMS and it doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. So what is real value of threat intelligence? What it can bring us generally, improved defense, totally. Early warning, we guess. Understanding of threat landscape, it's the biggest income for us now. Improved resiliency, I hope. And information sharing in and out. And many, many other buzzwords for management. Uh, what was our way in maturity in CTI, uh, stage one, uh, uh, no, not a lot of, a few years ago, you know, there is something like CTI, yeah, we found it. Then we installed the MISP and we fail, and still fail, think of the hill. Then we recognize that it's not that easy to only to get a lot of information. And there is also not only external adversaries, but internal too. So, the <laughs> stage five is you need full-time CTI unit. We have four people for half of FTE, only for CTI. And what is the real income of threat intelligence in these hard times, I mean, times of, of, of um, war conflict, uh, will tell you my colleague. Hello, I'm Jan, I'm white, but I'm pretty. And I know it. Uh, in the year 2007, uh, somewhere in September, uh, Israel uh, attacked the security systems of Syrian air defense, so he can peacefully bomb some nuclear plant. In year 2008, the Russia attacked by cyber means Georgia, so he can peacefully enter the foreign country. In 2009, uh, we saw GhostNet. Uh, China, uh, China just take the documents from over 100 countries. In 2009, everybody knows that's the Stuxnet year. And when Stuxnet went off, everybody was like, oh, okay, this is how this game is played. And they start uh, doing it like that. <laughs> so the question is now, is like, are we in the permanent state of cyber war? I don't have the answer for that. I leave that on you. But uh, we came from this, uh, from this, we don't have the discussion about what is war, what is, uh, what is just the hybrid, and uh, when, when is actually the act of war. Those two, uh, those two things was, a, was the regular act of wars. The, the both countries was in the war with the opponents. But we have the other side, and that's the war against the countries which are not in the, in the war state, on the state of war. And that's uh, that ghost net, that's uh, Russia attacks against Estonia, uh, against another countries, against the uh, United States, which are not without the shame as well. 
And this is not different with the, uh, with the Ukraine. For us, the war against Ukraine didn't start in 2022, but in 2014 by invasion of the Crimea. We didn't see that full scale, uh, full scale cyber war. We just saw some malware, some, some DDoS attacks, and they are, they were really uh, in small, small, uh, size. But in uh, January, January 2023, we start seeing the first marks or signs of something could happen. We had the, we had the lot of malware. We had the large DDoS attacks against the infrastructure of Ukraine, against the governments. But it was just a Russian classic. Uh, to put that like, we don't have the whole timeline because we'll be here for like hours. But the major things before the war started was like 13 of February, malware against the government entities and non-profit organizations. On 14th of February, there was in over 90 government websites was uh, displayed message, way to the worst. On 15th, there was a huge attack uh, against the banks and financial sector and radio networks. 23-2, we are very close to the invasion, and we see the Hermetic Viper. Who don't remember Hermetic Viper? 24-2, we also see the, uh, the first signs of the real electronic warfare. The satellite network was, uh, was disrupted together with the mobile, uh, mobile networks of the Ukraine. And the 24th, in the same day, came the invasion to the, to the Ukraine. What happened then? On the, uh, we don't, we don't try to explain kinetic or the geopolitical issues here or what, what was the purpose of that, uh, of that invasion. But we saw that, uh, that the attacks against the infrastructure in Ukraine was keeping, uh, keeping more track. Uh, he, one day after the invasion, known group Conti, somebody have the uh, practical uh, experience with it. Conti pledged support to Russian, Russian troops and Russian politics. Uh, they then, before, because the disagreement, they, uh, they end their, uh, their operations. Isaac Viper, and again and again, and we are repeating, uh, repeating the same scenario. We have the destruction tool, destruction attacks, and disruption attacks. DDoS, malware, DDoS, Viper, malware, malware, DDoS. Then we got in, uh, in April, we saw some credential leakage and uh, stuff like that. Uh, in the end of the uh, February and start of the, of the March, we saw the huge rise in hacktivist groups in their numbers. In, even in May of 2023, that's like not far ago, uh, we saw like over 60 groups active on the, on the Telegram channels and, and forums, which, uh, which was active in the war against the, against the Ukraine. Of course, this uh, large number of groups, even there are some are small, <coughs> it's, a, it's a big challenge to, uh, to follow them all or to investigate. Uh, the, what was the difference between the other, other conflicts or other, um, other attacks was that Ukraine, like two days after the, uh, after, after the invasion, they uh, published the call to arms to all hackers and IT personnel to join the IT army of Ukraine. They had, no, they have, they have more than 100,000 members. Ukraine side says it's 400,000. Can tell. So that was the first use of the, or use, that was first cyber guerrillas in the, in the hybrid war. And they were pretty, pretty, uh, uh, pretty successful. In the, even now, there is on, uh, for more than 40 groups who are pledged support to the Ukraine and they are attacking the Russian infrastructure every, uh, every day. Of course, the, uh, the war didn't end. It didn't end the cyber attacks. 
We see the DDoS attacks uh, every day against the Ukraine or against ourselves. Because of the nature of internet, we of course have to follow the Ukrainian groups because there is like some collateral damage, which is always can come to us. So we have attacks on like weekly basis on our infrastructure. Of course, it's not only DDoS, but they are uh, those uh, attacks from malware and uh, are not successful yet. Of course, they are not only Russians, and uh, but they are only other, uh, other countries which are supporting <coughs> Russian and which are helping in this uh, in this conflict. So uh, we have to, because of this conflict, we have to speed up our process of revisiting, revising the how security works, cybersecurity, and how the whole uh, whole process is managed. And we found out that reactive is just not enough. And we have to go to proactive, not just watching these channels, not just watching the uh, JIOCs, but be active in that communication in those channels and, uh, and etc. So we have to go, we have to go with the active cyber defense. We're talking a lot of activity about cyber active defense and I will just uh, shortly what is it, what it actually is. Basically, it's the strategy which will, which will identify counter attack, prevent cyber. Yeah, I, I see. He wants to talk again. And they are giving the active, uh, active countermeasures to the, uh, to the adversary. Uh, why to use? It's like early detection, very low false positive detection radio, and it's, Excellent detection engineering supplement, false per, uh, fake personas, etc. Et and about active cyber defense, Crazon, my colleague, will tell you maybe something. Yeah, something about, and we have to speed up. Mm -hmm. So, okay, active cyber defense is typically for uh, for army and uh, and secret services. So, but there are a few activities you can use. It's all about all about you can do and you can't. In uh, 2019, we presented this this table on the left. Uh, in purple, uh, there are activities you can do, and on the right, you can do because it's about botnet takedowns, typically for for <clears throat> for army. So there was a lot of a lot of activities, but it still has its shortcomings. I mean, the table, yeah, or that table, yeah, it was not comprehensive for practical use. So we need, needed to rework it. So we needed to answer a few questions, how to rework it. And it was about how to effectively and measurably do that. Uh, how to prioritize uh, is, uh, act our activities, how to support decision making for and explain it to bro a board and get it approved. So we create the process of it and what activities we included. A uh, combination of active, proactive re and reactive elements, you know, the main Goal for early detection is detection engineering and kill chain mapping, uh, mapping and use of gray zone elements uh, like deterrence and many other, uh, observing threat landscape and attack vectors using deception technologies and create it a, as business as usual. Managers will uh, understand to me. So we created our ACD loop which is our process. And this process has a six step. It starts with, with getting some input from CTI. Then we need to analyze it and prioritize. Uh, then, then we, 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 we need to model the wall possible attack. Uh, and <clears throat> then we need to verify our level of detection. Then we need to tune it and again validate it. So, to support our ACD loop, we needed to create some additions to MISP, 
For example, ACD gray zone tax taxonomy, uh, miss object, which is custom alerting detection um, strategy by Palantir, but we needed to extend it for, of, uh, with the countermeasures and, um, and Sigma rules, for example, and we use it for detection engineering management. Uh, then we added the miss uh, object thread groups, creating custom thread groups formerly from Thai, Thai CERT, and for fake personas management, we crea created object persona, which is from Mitra Engage. How to loop will explain my colleague, and he will be, hurry. Yeah, it will be very fast. We got like, uh, our ICD loop is for, basically, it's the based on the, on the CTI. And all the all the steps needs more or less uh, the CTI input. Uh, the CTI input is understandable. I don't need to explain anything. But uh, one thing is your own Intel or all your own environment is the uh, is the best uh, is the best environment where you get get that uh, get the informations. Uh, Next is like, uh, analyzing the uh, thread, if it's actually uh, for you. Uh, really thread or not. Modeling is not in house. Then visual, uh, visualization of that, uh, of that thread you get from the, input from the CTI. Uh, you will see the, uh, in graph how the, uh, how the adversary is working and how it's uh, going uh, to achieve his goals. Then it's you have to verify your actual status, uh, tune where we uh, implement the detection engineering, but also the active cyber defense uh, elements like fake personas uh, and stuff like that, or honeypots, tokens, whatever you want. And the last thing is that validate your setup, that your detection is working and it's your cell or all steps are in uh, OK. The changing of your mind in changing the processes is quite hard, so be patient with yourself. But you can have some takeaways from this quick presentation. Something you can tell your uh, grandchildren in your retirement, you know, and it's game changing, I guess. No kidding. Understand the CTI is critical for cy cyber. Yeah, we know it, but we still have a lot of space how to do it well. Once you have information, you must process it right. Uh, our advance, for example, is that we, we are state company and we usually get, um, very, very reliable information from our authority, cyber authority, and other co cooperating institution. Uh, traditional security is no longer enough, we know. Uh, we need to go proactive or active defense. And we are at the end of the file. If you if you like what we do, we have a few jigs in um, in uh, this year. You can come come to Brno. Uh, we we will have some case how to use deception elements elements for uh, phishing, and then I will try to explain to lawyers because I'm former lawyer uh, how we can manage active cyber protection according to NISDVA. Needs to, sorry. And if you want to change your processes in the company and want to implement some way how to use CTI and higher, higher uh, detection ratio, thanks to covering blind spots in detection with active countermeasures, and deception technology, you can uh, attend us at our workshop, which should be in one quarter of of next year. So there is a QR code. So thank you for your patience. That's all. Still <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Oops. Thanks for the talk. It's, it's just a quick question. Um, you presented the loop. I mean, you went over it too quickly, unfortunately. But um, the thing that stood out for me is that you start out with your threats. In short, I don't see a part any, anywhere in your process where you model the actual system and infrastructure that you're defending. So I would expect the modeling of the system itself that is to be defended to come first, to have the abstractions in place, and then you start going through your catalogs, and then you start you know, breaking down your threats, etc. Is there a reason for that, or where, at which point do you actually model the system itself? So you talk about thread modeling, but I would expect like the initial modeling of the entire system yeah. infrastructure to come first. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we, are, we are said that the programmers took the, the buzzword of thread modeling. Yeah, so, but, but we, we use it, uh, we still, uh, we still use it. It's about modeling, uh, the probable, probable behavior of the adversary. In that case, we can, we, we can go through this loop for only TTPs or, or for, for wall campaign. And we need to model how they possibly see their attack to, create a um, um, deception scenario, how to prevent that breach. We usually use well-known um, campaigns or groups' activities, if I, if I understand to your, to is, your question. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Before this part of presentation and this, this aiming on the, this part, we needed to, 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 to know, of course, we needed our attack surface, attack, attack, uh, threat, uh, threat landscape. Yeah, we were working with it. It's not, uh, it's not, you know, it's, we are not at 100%, but we, we are trying to move, move up. Did I, uh, did I answer to you? Thank you very much. Any more questions? Yes. I just have one question because you mentioned something about Russian thread actors in, at the beginning, and you said that they were always having the kind of same patterns, destroying DDoS and so on. How do you factually calculate such kind of things? How do you get the information to estimate or evaluate such kind of behavior? Oh. That's fair. I probably didn't understand the second part. You yeah. said uh, if you get the information. I didn't understand the first part, sorry, Alex. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. It was like, I was just like, uh, if we get the information, give him the mic. In one slide deck at the beginning, you mentioned that Russian thread actors are actually doing kind of the same patterns. They mm -hmm. always do the same kind of patterns. Yeah. Now, the, my question is, with the data that you collect, how do you factually evaluate such kind of patterns? I mean, it's maybe just because you see it on a regular basis that is mm -hmm. the actual pattern because you are maybe missing other things. So I'm just wondering, how do you calculate efficiently the, such kind of thing? It's like uh, when we go when we go from the up down, like you get this uh, information about the about the those Russian patterns. They are all over the place, but like this, these are uh, like disruption of the satellite networks mobile networks, but in that, uh, in that cyberspace, not electronic, uh, we have the information as Ondra says from the, from the authorities, either our, our, ours or European. And we not, we didn't saw this, uh, this, these actions on our eyes, but we have the information from those authorities and stuff. But on the other hand, we're trying to monitor a lot of sources. Mm -hmm. But to do, to, to, to verify through the loop every information, of course, we, we can't. And we, we have, we know that we have the advance in, got, uh, in data from the, mm -hmm. from the authorities. And it really helps us. Yeah. So, any? Other? Any other questions? Three questions will be our record. Uh, Oh, next time. <laughs> okay. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Thank you very much.